Hi, I'm Ishani Nigam and I'm passionate about creating content that educates and inspires the growth-minded youth who are hungry to achieve their goals. And on this YouTube channel, I do exactly the same. I share video podcasts of my first step ever. You can follow this podcast on Spotify, Google or Apple if you love listening to podcasts or else you can subscribe this channel where you can see the entire podcast. So, what are you waiting for? Let's get started. This is my first step ever. This is a place where I love to discover and hunt down stories of people who are very much like us but the only difference is that they have really worked hard to find purpose in their life or they have been so resilient that they have created a life of their liking so today please join me in welcoming a very special guest all the way from hong kong for the first time pin shay hi pin welcome on my first step ever yeah hi shani Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm very very happy and excited and thrilled to speak with you. I love your energy. I love that it keeps me really switched on. So <laughs> I actually before I just thought of saying ni hao to uh, Pei mm-hmm. and then he told me he's actually from Germany. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so how do you greet in German? He's like you just say hello. So I'll say hello Pei on my first step ever again. And before we move on I would like our listeners to know a bit about you. So Pin Shay, she is a personal development and career coach who comes from a diverse and an international background. And that's very interesting because I think people who have a bit of an international background and in them experience they have faced very different experiences in life and it's worth sharing. Also her passion lies in working and coaching with corporate professionals and high performers. to achieve even better successful life she helps them unlock their professional and personal potential and create an intentional meaningful life that lights them up now that sounds so good i i read some you work with mind and heart both now for all my listeners i would like to say this is what pen is all about but today we are going to discover or uncover who Ben is all about who she really is inside. On this podcast, I would really like to, you know, get into the phase of your life which I understand is where you started, you know, resenting things around your life and you were not liking what was happening. Probably you thought this is not what I had thought my life to be and that is one situation that a lot of us face in life and especially as a young adult the youth across the globe we nowadays start feeling it quite early in our professional careers or even before starting it so my first question to you fen is what mindset did you build on in your early career days and how did it affect you in the next few years in your career yeah um again very nice introduction to me and i'm more than happy to answer your question So yeah I was born and raised in Germany by Hong Kong Chinese parents and really from a very young age I thought having good grades going to a reputable university and then later on working in the big corporate world is really the path to success and to happiness because I I got to be honest at the very when I was young I didn't want to study business I wanted to study psychology because i was always so interested in the human mind human behavior but a lot of my friends said well really what do you want to do with psychology i think it's better for you to study business because you have more opportunities later on you can basically work everywhere because all company companies needs business so i listened and i was young so i listened i studied business and then in 2011 i i graduated and i bought a one way ticket to hong kong and my goal and my dream was to work in the corporate world and i had good grades and everything was very ambitious so i used to work in the corporate world in different in different roles like project coordinator sales executive business development manager in the big corporate world and then in 2015 i decided to move to taiwan to pursue my mba to accelerate my my career and to climb up the corporate ladder even faster and i would say that was really the turning point for me i was traveling alone with my backpack and exposed to spiritual temples pagodas meeting people from all walks of life 
And then all of a sudden I've realized, hey, wait a minute. There is a different way of living and a different way of working instead of the nine to five cubicle job. And then my mindset started to shift a little bit. All of a sudden I felt like my work in the corporate world felt meaningless. I had no purpose. I had no, no fulfillment there. But I was still working there because I was so ingrained when I was young to, to work in the corporate world. So, but fast forward about six months ago, I said to myself, I, I can't do this anymore. I, I want to make a purpose. I want to have a purpose. I want to create a meaning to other people's lives. I want to empower them to follow their heart and their dreams. So what I did was I went up to my manager and I said, I'm sorry, here's my resignation letter. I'm quitting. I'm now on a journey of self-development, self-realization and empower other people to do what they love to do and go after that. And this is how my mindset changed. What I want to emphasize on one thing over here, while you were in your early career days, as you mentioned, what really formed your thinking of, you know, how your life should be, a profession should be, was through your upbringing, your surroundings. But even in that situation where, you, you know, you had considered decisions of people around you, which was important to you, when and how did you get that courage of, you know, shifting country, coming from Germany to Thai, from to Hong Kong and from even from Hong Kong to Taiwan? Like, I think those are big steps, especially from Germany to Hong Kong, because you were in, I think you were an adult and you wanted to make a profession. So that was still a brave decision. What were you thinking at that point in time when you thought mm. of shifting? I was thinking at that time, I want to be independent. I want to be on my own. I want to be, I don't want to rely on my parents' money. So I wanted to be self-reliant. And that was my mindset at that time. And it, it, I, I had fears and I had anxieties. That, that was for sure, because it's such a big step from Germany to Hong Kong, right? So, right. yeah, I kept reminding myself, well, if I don't go, then I won't grow. I won't grow and I won't chase after my dream. And my dream was to, to move in a foreign country, to, to work in the big corporate world. So it didn't really stop me, like these anxieties and these fears. I just did it anyway. That's very interesting. So what I hear is that you had a desire back then, and that was a different desire. Earlier, it was more about your independence to you know, live your own life, to understand yourself, to have the freedom. And that's why you came to Hong Kong. So when you spend those odd years, you know, working uh, in the career, uh, what was your greatest learning? If you can just maybe summarize top three learnings that you had while working, it could be good or it could be mm -hmm. something like, you know, you regretted whatever you think was a learning that you had while living alone and working in a new country, it's because a lot of listeners who are with us right now, they, they, have, they are young and most of them might have moved to a different country. So it could help them understand that how this journey is like. So the three big learnings for me was or were or are, feel the fear. It is, I know that it, there is fear because it's out of your comfort zone. My biggest learning Feel the fear and do it anyway. And then ask yourself, what is the worst thing that can happen? And probably it's, oh, yeah, it didn't work out. I didn't like the country. I didn't like the job. All right, you at least tried it out. It is still um, a learning a learning curve for you. If it really doesn't work out, you can always still go back to where you're from. This is at least what I was telling myself moving to Hong Kong. If it doesn't work out, I just go back to my parents. So what? Interesting. That 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 is a very interesting take that take out the fear of being fearful or what is the worst that could happen. That's a question that is a very powerful question because I think I have been through. That's amazing. So that feel the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. That is amazing. So... Uh, <laughs> That's actually a good way to look at things because when you are in that particular situation and you're stressed, you just think about, you know, oh my God, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. But what you forget to 
ask yourself so what the so what can give you a lot of answers but from there when we move ahead in your journey then came a point that you started you did not like the life that you were living in a corporate sector and as you mentioned that you thought of quitting before quitting i'm sure you must have had a lot of internal dialogues a lot of dilemma and you know contemplation did you ever think before quitting that oh my god i have wasted so many years of my life now i have to start again did this mm. cross your mind if yes how did you counter that question for yourself because i really yeah. want to know what was going inside your head before quitting because anyone who's thinking of that they might get some sort of direction or help from this yeah oh that's a great question i did not regret it and i don't think it was a waste of time i learned a lot actually from the corp- corporate world whether it's good or whether it's bad like sometimes i feel like the the bad things are like it's it's like a learning thing for for us and if we look at it as a bad thing then it's it's our perspective i was making great money at that time who and it helped me to finance my current business so i look at it on the positive side uh what i also learned was so i did a lot of presentation while i was in the corporate world skill set so <clears throat> help me to present myself as a coach to the outside world so for example if i'm on webinars or if i'm on podcast my corporate my my job in the corporate world actually helped me to gain that confidence so it's i would say all all the experience whether good or bad it's never a waste it's never never mm-hmm. never ever that's a bang on bang on perspective if you ever which actually that those questions that i asked they have somewhat my questions you know slipped inside that because i'm facing it or maybe i had those times but it's very important questions because a lot of time you feel oh my god i've tried this this this, this did not work have i wasted my time in my life but that is a very good way to put things in perspective to anyone who's listening that whatever you have been through it's a learning it's a it's a journey it's it's a li- life that you're living and it is a part of your life you should embrace it and acknowledge it and move forward so pin that was a very 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 nice perspective that you shared i really like that so now coming to a very interesting part of your life which might have been you might be excited as well but you might uh, also have a bit of fear of unknown is when you started traveling in asian countries and you had certain experiences as you mentioned and that's when you thought that what is my purpose i would need fulfillment in my career in my profession in my personal life but i would like to ask you as a lot of us would like to you know go on travel we hear that oh you must travel you must learn you gain experiences and you'll find yourself so mm-hmm. because you have done that I would really like to ask you if you can pinpoint maybe one or two incidents in your travel or maybe if that's a summary of your learning what exactly made you think that the way that you think right now and you're a changed person I love traveling especially alone because I'm just with myself and my thoughts I reflect a lot so while I was traveling I was traveling in like really shady buses staying in like hotels or not hotels like hostels that backpackers were, yeah like really like backpacker style and i really enjoyed it i really really did especially um the walk in nature i was exposed to big wild nature i was so fascinated by that i it gave me such a sense of calmness and it was really the time where i felt i'm so connected to spirituality and i remember i was like in these in the countryside and i felt so welcome there it was it was so simple everything was so simple over there and so two days later i was traveling back to hong kong and then i needed to sit in my cubicle job and all of a sudden i felt like this this can't be it this can't this this cannot be my life here so i would say being exposed to wild nature that somehow a complete calmness went through my body and to my mind through everything and so that was the first thing second thing i've met so many interesting people along my journey in different in different parts of the 
of the countries. And then I thought, wow, I gained so much knowledge, insight, and wisdom from them. And when I went back to my corporate job, I felt like I'm just doing Excel sheets. I found it so meaningless. I didn't gain anything out of that somehow. So that was the second thing. And the third thing was the exploration. You, you just explore. You're going with the flow. It doesn't matter whether you're at this destination or that destination. The universe kind of guides you. And this is what I mean. Like I felt so connected to spirituality. The universe is guiding you. So I, I, felt, I really felt like I gained a lot of inspiration, a lot of insight of myself. What is it that I value? I really had some solitude time to think about, okay, what is the kind of life that I actually want? And then I realized being stuck in a nine to five cubicle job wasn't really for me, even though I was making a lot of money, but I didn't feel fulfilled. It didn't feel right in my heart and in my soul. Wow, I love, love that experience and love the way you've articulated it. I think the number one thing that you said that you you felt so calm in the nature, you know, around and amongst the nature. It, that's the first thing that I think we all feel that when, once you're out in the nature, you feel that you're such a small part of it that you start, you know, mm-hmm. releasing all your stress. The second thing that you've mentioned is meeting people, you know, uh, getting inspired with their wisdom. And that's when you understand that there are people with different perspective and that starts opening your mind because you start questioning your own thinking up to now. Mm, and the third yes. thing that you mentioned is you sat with yourself, you had the time to talk mm-hmm. to yourself and find your value. So that was a great sum- summary and I think learning uh, from your travel journey. So if anyone who would like to do that and hasn't yet done that, this these are a few things that you can discover along your travel journey as well. So thank you, Pin. Thank you so much for being on my first step ever. And as I ask all my guests before they leave, can you please leave our listeners with a thought or a saying that you really resonate with? I always say the universe has your back. And what I mean with that, sometimes, and this is what happened to me recently, that I want to control things. Things have to be a certain way. And if it doesn't, if it's not a certain way, I get a little bit irritated and maybe I get a little bit frustrated, but then I need to remind myself the universe, they will act, they will serve you in your, in the highest, in the highest good. So you've got to trust the universe and having faith. So that really resonated with me. Lovely. The universe has your back. He or she will take care of you. That is such a positive note to end this episode of my first step ever today. And I would love to share all about Pin Share if you're really interested to know about him on my Instagram account at my first step ever underscore I N. Boom! That was an amazing episode. If you've learned something out of it, something that inspired you, put down in comments below what you really like and what would you like to listen to more. And before leaving this channel, if you feel like you would like to listen to more of these, like, share and subscribe you know the drill and also press the bell icon so that you can hear the notifications see you until next time